of prayer and I don't know about you but I know that I need prayer you need prayer the world needs prayer our church family needs prayer these days and the song we're going to sing is, is you are good you are good do you believe that this morning you are peace you are peace. I don't know about you, but I need some peace right now. You are true. You are true. Even in my wandering. You are joy. You are joy. You're the reason that I sing. And the chorus says, oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. I hope that every time you come to church, you come with an attitude of prayer. But in these moments, I want us to really think 
about the words we're about to sing and visualize ourselves in an attitude of prayer running into the arms of God. You will always be enough. Do you believe that? As we sing this through, I'm going to leave ask John to keep playing if his fingers will allow. And I'd like to open it up for some time of sentence prayers or um, just moments of you crying out to God for yourself or for your church or for a friend. But verse 3 says, you are more, you are more than my words will ever say. Every Sunday morning, Stefan and I try to tell you about who Jesus is and his love. But we can't ever do that with our words, can we? But then it says, you are Lord. You are here. You are God. And of all else, I'm letting go. I'm running. <laughs> Sing this with us this morning.
we just bow before you and Lord we just lift up our concerns that are on our hearts this morning to you Father we just pray for our broken world that we live in Father there is so much that can distract us but Lord in these moments we just put those aside and focus on the cross Father Allow us to remain focused on you this morning. That we are faithful to you and that you are faithful to us. So, Father, um, I thank you that we have this space. We have this opportunity to come and to worship you. Father, be with us in these moments as we continue to uplift our concerns to you. And, Lord, I encourage others to share what's on their heart what they would like to lift to you so we can pray together.
say you are lord and we hold fast to the promise that all creation will proclaim that you are here god and in your presence we are made new we are made whole you are god and of all else i'm letting go so lord in these moments i pray that this time of intentional prayer in seeking you lord has been a true time of running into your arms our strength, our peace, our comfort, our God, our Savior. So, Lord, I just pray for Stefan now as he stands on your word. Lord, I pray you strengthen him. God, empower him and encourage him and surround him with your love today. In your name we pray, God. Amen. Well, thank you for that time of prayer this morning. And to focus on him, amen. And to lift our concerns to him. I don't know about you, but I'm a little chilled a little bit with the rain and with the weather of outside. It's almost like we're dragging our feet a little bit this morning, isn't it? So why don't you turn to your neighbor, those to your left and to your right and in front of you, behind you, and say, God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. And we look at that this morning, and we continue in our sermon series, The Building Blocks of Faith, and another block has been added in service, and that's a tough one, service. And what does that mean in our world today? So if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, or your phones, whatever you use for your scripture, I encourage you to turn to Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20 this morning, uh, reading at verse 17 to 35, Acts 20, verses 17 to 35. It says, now from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable 
and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I'm going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor is precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I've gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, For I do not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay attention to yourself and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, and here it is, church, it is more blessed to give than to receive. All right, that's it. (laughs) That was a lot. That was a lot. We're going to unpack that a little bit this morning. But I, I, I emphasize verse 35 um, that I just read this morning. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning in service. But not just about service, meaning that God will remain faithful when we give of ourselves to Him and to our community and to our church. And we're going to look a little bit at more into that this morning. But if you have your sheets with you that I that Bev passed out to you as you came in, if you didn't get one, I'm sure she there's extras there. Maybe you want to fill out two or three for your friends to give them. I don't know. But service is work done for others. Simple. Work done for others. That's the definition if you look it up. A good old Google or Webster's Dictionary or Wikipedia, whatever you want to use. Service is work done for others. Putting yourself, putting others before yourself. There's a story about Winston Churchill. It says, during World War II, England needed an, to increase its production of coal. Winston Churchill called together labor leaders to enlist their support. At the end of his presentation, he asked them to picture in their minds a parable which he knew would be held in Piccadilly Circus after the war. First, he said, would come the sailors who had kept the vital sea lanes open during the war. Then would come the soldiers who had come home from Dunkirk and then gone on to defeat Rommel in Africa. Then would come the pilots who had driven to Luftwaffe from the sky. Last of all, he said, would come a long line of sweat-stained, soot-streaked men in miners' caps. And someone, someone would cry from the crowd, And where were you during the critical days of our struggles? Pointing at these men who were sweat stained and coal all over their face. And from 10,000 throats of men would come the answer. We were deep in the earth with our faces to the coal. You see, not all jobs in the church 
are prominent and glamorous. But it's often the people with their faces to the coal who help the church accomplish its mission. You see, giving of yourself for service, giving of yourself maybe to volunteer, it might not be the most glamorous thing. But we all have a part to do. Just like the sailors had a part to do, just like the soldiers had a part to do, just like the miners had a part to do in this illustration. We all have a part to play in God's church. And I say that this this morning, that it will be difficult. It will be. But when we remain faithful to God, and God remaining faithful to us, He's going to bring us through that. So there's two things I want to focus on this morning. The first is, what should we be faithful in? What should we be faithful in? And the most important requirement is to be faithful to the Lord, isn't it? It's to be faithful to the Lord. And the, this requirement is highlighted in the words of Paul, which we spoke about in our scripture that we read a few moments ago. And it shows that Jesus was a very large part of Paul's life. And Paul would never think of himself apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul belonged to him alone. And so he lived to do the will of Jesus. That was Paul's sole purpose. And in verse 24, he reveals how willing he was to deny self, to deny himself in serving the Lord. And he said in verses 22 and 23, and now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. You see, Paul was heading to Jerusalem in obedience to what Jesus was telling him he needed to do. Despite knowing the awful trials he would face there, and we all, many of us know that what happened to Paul in his preaching sometimes. He was thrown in prison. And Paul knew that this was going to come. Jesus knew that this was going to come. But Paul still continued on. Knowing what was going to happen to him. But doesn't this remind us of what Jesus himself did? Jesus, he went to Jerusalem towards the end of his earthly ministry, despite knowing that he will be betrayed, didn't he? He will be betrayed, he will be condemned to death, he will be humiliated, he will be spat upon, and he would have been crucified. But this then is what it meant to serve, to give of yourself, knowing that it's not all roses and butterflies. That sometimes it would be difficult to do that. But the Lord's interest must always come first. We must be faithful to the Lord. And they must be placed well above our own personal interest and gains. Faithful, faithfulness to the Lord demands this attitude in our service. And it's on your sheet. He must increase. And we must decrease. So we need to put the Lord above ourselves. So he must increase. And we must decrease. You know, it's sad in our world today that many who serve are not interested in decreasing. And I say that this morning, that they would rather increase in fame and fortune. And they would always want something in return for doing something good in the community. Or whether they, they want something in return for doing something. It's almost like they're only doing it as a favor. That you need to repay me back if I'm going to do this. You know, they dream of a lap of luxury and this... This makes them covet more silver and gold for themselves like we read in our text. 
and the Apostle Paul that we read about would disagree with them very strongly. And it says here in verse 33 and 34, I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel, meaning I didn't cover, covet things or money. You yourself know that these hands minister to my necessities and to those who are with me, meaning that if I give myself, that Christ is going to look after you in return. Right? That if we give ourselves to Christ, He's going to reward us in return. Maybe not by earthly things. And we know that we don't do things for earthly things because all of this around us, all of the things around your home, they're all temporary. But the things... Like the old course says, the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That the Lord is going to look after us when we surrender over to him. Paul worked as a tent maker, if you didn't know that. He worked as a tent maker to provide not only for his own needs, but for the needs of others as well, those he would be serving. And when Paul wrote this epistle to the Philippians sometime later, so over in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 8, it says this, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. In one translation, it was count them as dung, as garbage, as filth in order that I may gain Christ. So I have a question for you to ponder. Are you more faithful to the Lord or to yourself? It's blunt, I know. (laughs) But I need to ask myself that as well. Am I more faithful to the Lord or to myself? And when this question has been settled, we should then go on to another area in our life that requires faithfulness. And that's fulfilling the roles that Christ has given us to serve in his church or to serve in our community or just to serve in general. And the Apostle Paul is a good example of one who was very faithful to fulfill his role in life. Verse 24 It reads, but I do not account my list of any value nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. You see, Paul knew exactly what the Lord wanted him to fulfill. He was to share the gospel message in love. That's what Paul was instructed to do. And this was his role that he was given by Jesus to serve him. And through his faithful teaching and testifying to Jews and to Greeks and everyone else in between, he preached the kingdom of God and he warned the Christians against false teachings. And the Ephesian church was firmly established on a strong foundation that Paul had, that Christ had used Paul to plant. And Paul fulfilled his role Well, despite the many challenges that he faced at Ephesus. But Paul did not expect the elders of Ephesus to do what he did. Because they had a different role to play. In verse 28, they were told to feed the church of God. And in verse 29 to 31, they are told to keep watch against false teachings. That they may come into the church both from without and even from within. So that was the roles of the elders in the church. They had a specific role that they had to do. Paul had a specific role that he had to do. And then everyone else, they all had their own roles to do. So did the Ephesian elders fulfill their role well? Yes. It was different than Paul's, but they still fulfilled it. But Paul was faithful in his role testifying of the gospel of the grace of God wherever he went. And the elders of Ephesus were 
faithful in their roles as shepherds who provide it for the flock and protected it from danger. And there are many roles of servicing God's kingdom besides those two roles. In the earlier chapters of Acts, and you can read that in your own time. We'll still be here till Christmas if we went through the book of Acts. But in the earlier chapters, we have seen that some are called to serve as maybe senior members, maybe as evangelists, maybe as teachers, maybe as greeters, as people come in. Others may have been blessed with spiritual gifts. Some were prayer warriors. Some, was, some were good at administration and discernment and hospitality and giving and mercy or encouragement. You see, we need all of those things within the church body. We're all called to something different. We can't have 32 preachers in the room like this. That's how many's here this morning. As I count it. But we can't have 32 preachers or we can't have 32 guitar players or, or 32 um, people to take up the offering. But I do want 32 people who's going to pray. I do want that. But what needs to be impressed on us this morning is that we all have a role to play in God's kingdom. We all have a role to play. And as everyone's role is important for the church to grow and to be used of God, the Bible says that the church is like a human body. What happens when one organ in a person's body is not functioning well? What happens? The whole body suffers. We get sick, don't we? We get sick. We begin to fall apart. And the same thing happens if one member is not fulfilling his or her role faithfully. The whole church suffers. Now, it may just be a sprained ankle or a stuffy nose, but it hinders our performance. It brings us down. So another question to ask yourselves. Are you fulfilling? Are you fulfilling your God-given role in his kingdom? Not necessarily here in this church or in the community, but this is personal this morning. Are you fulfilling your God-given role in His kingdom? Now, please do not think that there is no role for you in God's kingdom. Don't let anyone tell you that you have nothing to give, because you do. We all have something to give to God. To extend his kingdom. And if for some reason. You think that you have nothing to offer. To God. Let me share. This with you. There's one thing that. Anyone can do. And that's to pray. We can all. Be prayers. We can be. Prayer warriors. And if praying is the only role that you think that you can fulfill in God's kingdom, then please make sure that you are as faithful as possible in prayer to him. When the enemy tries to throw things at you and tries to distract you, pray. Pray. The church, the big C church, needs your prayers. Without prayer, all that we do will lack God's power. It'll be just doing for the sake of doing, and there's no reward in it. We have seen our need to be faithful to the Lord, haven't we? Faithful to fulfill our respect of God-given roles. But now we come to this question. And number two this morning is how can we remain faithful? The first that I said earlier was what should we be faithful in? And number two is how can we remain faithful? You see, how do we keep doing all these things until we reach the end? Paul had said in our text this morning that 
we would continue until our job was done. That we must remain faithful till the end. So we're going to look at just very quickly three encouragements that he gave to the elders. The first is found in verse 28. Where it was this, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church. You see, the elders would have already known that they were to guard the flock, which is the church. And that that's, was their role as elders. But what do we see here? Paul was telling them to take heed unto themselves first in order to remain fit to guard the flock. That we must look at ourselves first. And there's always a temptation for those who serve the Lord to get busy in other things in life and involved with serving, that they neglect their own walk with God. And as a result of this, they become spiritually weak. They fall into sin and become ineffective in their service. And I hope that everyone who is serving in any ministry, that we take these words seriously to guard ourselves. To keep looking at ourselves and our own heart and our own relationship with God. That we remain faithful to Him. Because when we remain faithful to Him, He remains faithful to us. There's one good way to know whether you are spiritually well or not. And we talked about it last week. Look at your love for the Lord. And look at your love for others. If your love for Him has grown cold, you are unwell. No two ways to put it. You are unwell. And you need to rekindle that love before things get worse. So ask yourself another question. I know I'm throwing a lot of questions out at you. But it's to get you thinking get you to have conversations between you and God. Have you left your first love, meaning Jesus? Have you left him? Has your love for the Lord grown cold? If it has, one way to restore it is to build yourself up spiritually. You may be diligent in maybe feeding others, you may be diligent in serving others, but we need to feed ourselves first. And it's found in verse 32. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, meaning scripture. And Paul said this because he had to leave the Ephesians that would no longer be present to teach them as he had done before. But no matter what had happened, they would always have God's word with them to build them up. As, the, as long as they continued to study it. And this would enable them to remain faithful to the end and to receive their eternal rewards in heaven. And if we remain faithful, we must give sufficient time to study his word. If you look at one of the foundations here, what was number two that we talked about? I know you can't see it because of the leaves, but it's Scripture. Having that firm foundation of God's Word, it keeps us stable, doesn't it? It keeps us firm in our walk. We must look to him for all the help we need to remain faithful. But God was Paul's confidence. Paul might not have had any confidence in himself. But his confidence was in Christ. And our confidence in our walk in, of giving of ourselves to others, we need to remain in Christ. That's why it ends in verse 32, and it says, And now I commend, or the New Living Translation, I like this word better, I entrust you to God, is what Paul said to his people. I entrust you 
I give you over to Christ. That, yeah, when I leave, when Paul leaves the church to go on to another mission field, to go and plant another church somewhere else, he said, I'm going to leave you now, but I leave you in the hands of God. How cool is that? I leave you with the commander in chief. I'm just a soldier. I leave you with Christ. You see, after all, God had purchased us with his own blood. Did he not? On this thing back here. On the cross. And if Christ purchased his church at such great cost to himself. Do you think he will leave its fate to be determined by the changing hearts of men and women? Remember, Christ is the one in control. He will surely see it that his church will endure to the very end. And that's why Christ calls us to serve him in his church, to the community, to the world. Because trust me, the world needs it. The world needs it. That's why Christ has bestowed gifts and talents upon you, upon me, upon all of us, and those watching live stream. That's why Christ has bestowed talents upon you to serve his church. The worship team is going to come and we're going to sing a song. And as they come, there's still much more that needs to be done as we move forward in our journey, in our spiritual journey, in our journey as Salvation Army Connection Point. That we must continue to work together to build a church family that is committed to serving others to the glory of God. Amen? Will we be able to do these things well? We don't know. We don't know. But this thing we do know is that God is faithful. All the time. All the time. God is faithful. God will see us through it. And the closing words of Paul to the church of Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He who calls you, meaning Christ who calls you. He's faithful, and he will surely do it. I'm going to challenge you this morning, and I contemplated whether to do this or not, but I feel I have to. I feel the prompting of the Spirit and encouragement from my wife to do it as well. But here I, I, and it's emotional for me. It's just my personal covenant. And I made this up myself to use as a resource for you. It says, I, you fill in your name, promise. to allow God's faithfulness to guide my heart in faithful service to Him. I promise to love and to serve Jesus, to live accordingly to His will for my life, and to give to others as best as I can. This is from my heart. <laughs> to you this morning. 
I'm not going to share about my week. Because it's been heck. But here's my comfort. It's an officer. That I signed. Can I read it? This is my covenant. Called by God, first and foremost, <laughs> to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as an officer of the Salvation Army. I bind myself to him in this solemn covenant to love first, to love and, and serve him supremely all my days. To live to win souls and make their salvation the first purpose of my life. <laughs> to care for the poor. To feed the hungry. To clothe the naked. To love the unlovable and befriend those who have no friends. To maintain the doctrines and principles of the Salvation Army. And by God's grace to prove myself as a worthy officer. Done, done in the strength of my Lord and Savior. And in the presence of the territorial commander, training college officers, and fellow cadets as witnesses to this. Friends, I've failed this at times. But God remains faithful. We mess up as people. But God remains faithful. So as they sing, as they lead us in this song, you can leave them right here. <laughs> I encourage you, I strongly encourage you this morning. To think about this. And to come and maybe take one. There's pens here. If, if you're able to kneel. You can sign right here. You can sign right here. On these chairs or these right here. Or you can take them. And, and spend some personal time. In prayer with Christ. Maybe this afternoon. In the comforts of your own home. With scripture open your heart open to say that I promise to follow God's, to allow God's faithfulness to guide my heart in faithful service to Him. I challenge you. I encourage you. And I thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable. But remain fixed on Him okay don't do it for me don't do it for us do this for you do this for you this morning as a simple act as a symbol that you give your heart to Christ to serve him not to serve yourself or to serve me or to serve this church but you serve God this is just an avenue to do it. Lead us on this morning. You stood before creation. Eternity in your hand You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand 
You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours all i am is yours So many times it's hard to know what to do in these moments because you're afraid. <laughs> what about if I can't keep this up? What about if I mess up? But there's an old song that is in our Salvation Army song book and John, I don't know if you know this one or not, but um, it's my favorite song. And the tune is called Trust in God. That's what the tune is called. 
And it says, when from sin's dark hold thy love had won me, when its wounds thy tender hands had healed, as thy blessed commands were laid upon me, growing light my growing need revealed. The second verse says, but my heart at times with care is crowded. Oft I serve with weak or laden hands. And that earthly joy, that early joy grows dim and crowded as each day its heavy toils demands. Have I ceased from walking close beside thee? Have I grieved thee with an ill-kept vow? In my heart of hearts have I denied thee? Speak, dear Lord, and tell me now. But this is what the Course says. Are you ready? By the love. By the love that never ceases to hold me. By the blood that thou did shed for me while thy presence and thy power enfold me. I renew my covenant with thee. Friends, the world is tough right now. And there's not a lot of joy and hope around, is it? And it's easy for all of us to get really tired and throw our hands in the air and say, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. But this is where we, as Christians and God's church, we've got to dig our feet in a little bit harder. And as we talked about last week, loving others, that's the best evangelism we can give. We're going to serve with weak and or laden hands. Hands down. We do it. We all do it. But the part to remember is by the love that will never cease to hold you. By the power that is in the blood he shed for you. By his presence. Do you feel him here this morning? The presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will enfold me. What a beautiful vision. Take my heart and form it, God. Are you open to that? Take my heart and form it. Take my mind. Transform it. Lord, there's so many things out there that want my mind to be full of nothing of you. But take my mind and transform it. Now, here's the hard one. Take my will. God gave us that will, right? But take my will and conform it. But not to the world, not to anything else, but to Jesus. And that's what we're asking you to do today, church. Conform your will to him. Because as Stefan said, the service is to him. And then your service to your church and your service to your community, that all happens when we're serving Christ. Are you ready to renew your covenant with him this morning? Where are you? Maybe you've never made a covenant with him before. But here's the time to say, take my heart. Take my mind. Take my will. But Lord, to yours. Not to me. Not to Stefan. To Christ.
Righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. Oh, oh take my heart. Salvation Army is also considered Human Trafficking Sunday, where we bring attention to it, but also that we pray for it. And there's a verse that's not really here, but we used to sing it when I was growing up, and it said brokenness. And brokenness doesn't really mean we're broken people on the floor, don't know how to put it all together. Brokenness in this mean means break my heart, God, for what breaks yours. And injustices is that, isn't it? And this morning we're just going to sing the word brokenness. Brokenness is what I long for. Because we need to be broken to God's will, not to our will. And brokenness is what we need for the world around us. We're going to sing brokenness. And after that we are going to have a special prayer for this Sunday in the Salvation Army praying that God will use the Salvation Army as a way to help bring recognition, but to help break chains. And that those who find themselves in the chains of human trafficking, that today will be found released. Or if that's not the case, they will feel God's presence just like Paul. <laughs> when Paul was in prison, he, would know, he knew that God was there. So sing brokenness with me. Brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me. Take my And for me, take my mind, transform it, take my will, and conform it to yours, to yours, O Lord, to yours, to yours. turn our time and our unity, God, to looking at those who are finding themselves today in circles that they didn't put themselves in. God, right now we're just saying brokenness is what we want, not brokenness in spirit, but brokenness for those things that break your heart, God. Brokenness to be in unity with you, God, so that our will is in tune with you, that our hearts are in tune with you, that our mind is in tune with you, God. So right now, as we specifically turn 
our attention to those, God, found in human trafficking today. God, I pray that you will break chains. God, I pray that you will unify us together, Lord, to, to bring this to an end. God, show us ways that we can help people finding themselves in this way. God, may we be beacons of light and hope to those, God, that we come in contact with so that, Lord, if they are struggling or if they're in unsafe predicaments, God, that they will know that we are safe people to talk to and that we can point them and help them, Lord, hopefully to find you but to find safety and to find ways to break rings and chains that they are finding themselves in today. Lord, we know it's not just women caught in these circles. God, it's men. It is children. Lord, I pray that right now that you will be with these people, God, wherever they are in Canada, in British Columbia, God, in the world, and that right at this moment they will know that someone is lifting their names to the Father. God, may your spirit of comfort and peace, God, rest on people wherever they are today, God. Lord, we just pray that your will be done on this earth. And God, may we move out of the way to allow that to happen. Lord, I also turn our attention back to our time of recommitment to you. God, I pray that in these moments, as we've sang, I will stand with arms high and heart abandoned. As we've sang, Lord, to you, to you, our mind, our will, God, conform us to you. Not to the ways of the world, but to you, God. So, Lord, I just pray that in these moments, if our hands feel that they're weak and overladen, if our hearts feel like we've grieved you, God, I pray that in these moments we have been reconnected to you, that we will have spent time in your presence knowing that you have said, it's okay, because my love will never cease to hold you. The power of the blood that I shed for you is your righteousness and your redemption, so hold on to that today. So God, this morning, as your church, as the leaders of Connection Point, we renew our commitment and our covenant to you today, God, but to you and your will. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for these beautiful moments spent in your presence. Amen. Uh, Tom is going to come with a few announcements. And I'm not sure if Stefan gave you the Christmas one, did he? Uh, no, he did not. <laughs> Stefan asked me this morning what other announcements, and to be completely honest, my brain was not working. So before I pass this to Tom, I want to show you this. This is on the back table. So um, guess what, friends? It is 12 Sundays next Sunday. So today is 13 Sundays. But it's 12 Sundays to Christmas. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> I'm a little bit of a Christmas person. <laughs> so if you're contemplating your Christmas tree as the weather is turning dark and you're just like sad and you want your Christmas tree up, here's a way to get some Christmas spirit without actually annoying the rest of your family with your Christmas tree already. <laughs> so we here at Connection Point will be doing Christmas hampers this year for the West Shore and Souk. <coughs> what does that mean? Don't have all the answers for that yet. What I can tell you is we're expecting to service Three to 500 families. That's how much we don't know. That's a big window. <laughs> but we have found, Stefan and I um, and Pat, over the years of running Christmas hampers, that children are always thought about when it comes to toys, but our teenagers sometimes are always left on the back burner because they just are. Because it's so much funner to go and buy a little toy for Tommy or a makeup set for Rachel than it is to buy underwear for a teenager. But guess what? We still need to love our teens. So as a way to ensure that we have teenage things for our tables for our Christmas distribution, we have decided to do 12 weeks instead of 12 days of Christmas giving. And this is the first six weeks right here. And I've given you lots of options. It doesn't say you have to come with cozy socks, manicure sets, and clippers. If you can come with cozy socks or you can come with clippers, or you can come with manicure sets. Or if you are feeling really generous, we will take five pairs of socks and we will take three pairs of manicure sets. That is up to you. Um, 
This can get as expensive or as cheap as you want. We are trying to be consistent with our giving, so please remember that. But if you can afford a Dollarama pair of socks or you can afford a really fancy pair of slippers, that is your choice to make. We will accept all donations to help bless our teenagers this Christmas season. So these are on the back table, and it'll start next Sunday. So next Sunday is cozy socks, manicure split sets, and clippers. And we would do a lovely gathering of that, and there might be a little Christmas tree here by next Sunday so that we can put all these fun things underneath the tree so that we can feel like we're giving to Christmas. Um, Is so we'll your Christmas tree already set up at home? I'm not allowed to do it till after Remembrance Day. Okay. But Remembrance Day at one, maybe November the 11th at 2 p.m. We'll see. <laughs> Tom. He always does this to me. Calls me up and makes me stand there. Um, I just wanted to mention while I was in the uh, sound booth there be while she was talking and she says uh, to give the, the Lord your will. I didn't quite hear it right. I thought you said to give the Lord your wheel. <laughs> and I go, yeah, well, we need that's too. You got to let him be in the driver's seat. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, announcements. Brave girls, I have a unslumber party this Tuesday night. I'm not quite sure what that means. But it doesn't sound like they're sleeping, though. <laughs> they're unslumber. So it's so it's this uh, Tuesday at 4.30. If you have any questions, see Tanisha or Melissa. They should be able to give you all the answers. This Thursday, September 30th, is Orange Shirt Day to bring awareness to our Indigenous communities. Connection Point will be closed to uh, honor that. So uh, if you have to talk to Stefan or Tanisha or anything, just remember Thursday we're closed here. Okay, um, if you didn't get it from a sermon and from the songs and that, we need volunteers <laughs> for everything. Because with COVID and everything like that, sometimes some of us have a sore throat and we don't want to come, and so we need somebody to fill in. So we need it for all aspects of the ministry, worship, on stage here, behind the scenes back there. We need people back there to uh, put the words up. We need people to help with the live stream. We need people to help with the sound. So there's lots of jobs that we need help with people. Greeters. We need people every Sunday to greet. Bev's been doing a great job the last few weeks, but she needs help. And coffee team, we want to we want to have a coffee after the service, so we need people that want to help with that too. So. And of course, our family service ministry, there's always needs lots of volunteers for that during the week. So um, see where you can help out. And I'm sure if you really want to help out, you'll find a way to do it. Uh, there's uh, sign-ups at the back lobby there by the, uh, the reception office there if you want to sign up for a certain area. So uh, just, just look at that. Updates, keep... Uh, abreast of things on our Facebook page and the emails uh, when things change and things are changing with all the time with COVID. So we'll just uh, make sure you're kept up to date. That's all the announcements I have. Uh, well, I sat down. <laughs> I was smart enough to sit down. Um, just with the orange shirt day thing, um, we at Connection Point are being very intentional that even though we are closed on that Thursday, Throughout the day, there will be lots of ways to educate and learn and celebrate Indigenous culture being shared through Facebook. So please pay attention to that. I think if you all have Uncle Matt on Facebook, Uncle Matt will be reading a very special story. Melissa will be doing a special children's time. Um, and we will be also just uh, bringing recognition to Orange Shirt Day and different ways to celebrate um, our Indigenous culture. So. We will be closed, but being very intentional about ways to ensure that we are celebrating and remembering what Orange Shirt Day is about. Do you want to say something? <laughs> no, you just wanted to look at the mic? Okay. Um, will you stand with us as we get ready to leave? But I want to read the last verse of that song that I was reading. By the love that never ceased to hold me, in a bond, nor life nor death shall break. As thy presence and thy power enfold me, I would plead fresh covenant to make. From before thy face, each vow renewing, strong in heart, 
with purpose pure and deep, I will go henceforth thy will pursuing with my Lord on broken faith to keep. Isn't that beautiful? By the love that never ceased to hold you, church, by the blood which thou didst shed for you, while thy presence and his power enfold you, go in peace and serve the Lord this, this morning. We're going to sing, build your kingdom here. And that is our prayer that as we go to serve the Lord, we will be his kingdom extended, building it on the west shore. Amen. All right, let's sing together. One, two, three. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and bait us now. We are your church. We need your power. kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your joy and pride to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor at peace we lay down our lives for heaven's call we are your church we pray revive go build your king Heal our streets and land. Go build his kingdom, church. God bless.